Okay, this is a new stent. It's the first time I implant this stent, so it's, uh, I never saw it. <laughs> that builds confidence. The heart and soul of TCT has always been the live cases. There's a rich tradition of live case education in interventional cardiology, and it really started with Andreas Grunzig. One of the very early unique aspects of TCT was the use of live case uh, demonstrations. Which was very helpful at the time because your exposure to multiple operators was quite limited, so it was great to see how other people uh, work. It really truly is the essence of, of TCT for the clinician, for the practitioner, for the, the interventionalist who's, uh, who's in the cath lab dealing with each and every one of those uh, issues and, and scenarios as they're being presented. The genesis of education in coronary angioplasty, particularly balloon angioplasty, was a derivative of the live case format. It was innovated by Andreas Grunzig. He was a strong believer in the fact that to teach procedures, if uh, you couldn't be at the bedside with hands-on actually learning how to do a procedure, you couldn't describe it, you couldn't show still frames, and you couldn't just show the numbers and the data, that there was a uh, certain palpable experience of watching and envisioning a case as it was being done, which allows the attendee or the um, person in the audience to put themselves in the place of the operator, to constantly be thinking, what would I be doing next? To agree or disagree with what the operator was doing to see if that would lead to a successful outcome or less than a successful outcome. And it gives an immediate type of feedback, uh, which I think uh, provides a learning experience that can't be duplicated any other way. I think everyone here is uh, delighted at the result, Antonio. And when I think of the, um, the history of live courses, there were several places that were doing live courses, uh, including Emory, including uh, um, the San Francisco Heart Institute with Sturzer and Myler. Well, Emory was an extension of what Andreas Grunzig first began, and uh, people like Spencer King and, um, uh, and John Douglas continued that tradition. It was largely based upon balloon angioplasty. Um, the courses in Kansas City were solely balloon angioplasty, complex lesions. But they really started with Grunzig and then a transition from Grudzing to Kansas City with Jeff Hartzler and his colleagues and in a series of courses that were being done once a year in Kansas City and then once a year in Hawaii, all live case courses in the most complex patients, nothing held back, primarily balloon angioplasty only, the world learned how to do angioplasty by coming to what were then known as the Hartzler courses. Then I believe they transitioned to TCT. The mantle was certainly continued uh, by, by this uh, meeting, and I think it, uh, it had a, a variety of impacts. First of all, it was able to highlight and demonstrate the uses of technologies, but also it gave you real-life experiences and allowed you know, an enormous number of physicians to see how other physicians and very experienced operators operated. And you know, it gave people a lot of tips and tricks and practical aspects to take home with them beyond the high science and the novel technology, some of which some of these individuals would not be able to touch for sometimes years at a time. We focused not on balloon angioplasty, but on innovation. TCT from the very beginning was, was an expression of innovation, of creation, of evolution. And we looked at only new devices, and we looked at, in a very critical way, hopefully in an academic way and in a clinical way, how these devices might evolve, iterate, and impact clinical medicine. Come on, John, you've been using LPS catheters in your lab as recently as a year or two ago. Uh, I think with TCT first having an emphasis on live case courses for these emerging technologies, but then transitioning into treatment of everyday patients, treatment of complex patients using standard FDA approved technologies with non-investigational approaches. All right, Fred, give them away. Look over at the camera here. While at the same time showing the most complex, cutting edge procedures, uh, looking at the new emerging investigational devices. Uh, they cover a, a very uh, broad aspect of the practice of cardiac and vascular interventions, and at the same time, they're not isolated just to the case. They're, they're presented in a very concise way that makes people understand why the procedure is done, what the alternatives are, why are the selections done, what other selections as possible, 
and everyone can feel part of it and discuss uh, later on uh, in their own hospital what he saw, what the various debates were, and what the decisions could be in their own environment. Now in a non-obstructed state with, I won't say a resolve, but a ruptured plaque causing a non-transmural infarct in the year 2000, should we treat this or should we just treat this medically? Those cases give you such a huge um, insight to, uh, to your own clinical practice. Certainly, um, many, many tips and tricks are learned at TCT that you might not have thought about by having the world-class faculty with the highest experience. Some of these interventionalists who are uh, performing live cases, most of them do more than five, six, seven hundred cases a year and they've seen it all and so when you watch them get into trouble and then get themselves out of trouble, there is nothing that speaks to that, that learning process uh, than just watching that live. We'll make it alright. Hell, we'll make it alright for you. So in 1993, we, we began international live case transmissions, first time that, it, that had ever been done in medicine, um, with several sites, um, notably in France, Toulouse, Antonio Colombo, in Milan, and, and Patrick Sarais in Rotterdam, some of the key sites in the world. And we believe at TCT that bringing uh, the international experience to the United States is critically important. Of course, new device development right now is often occurring overseas. First in man studies are almost never done in the United States anymore. They're often done in Australia, New Zealand, South America, or certain areas in Europe. I tell you one thing honestly, it's the first time I do these things like these. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say so. And to bring um, early device experiences in man back to the United States, if we can't have them yet in our patients, to see them actually being done live, I think provides all the United States physicians and physicians around the world with uh, new vistas, new horizons, new ways of thinking about coronary artery disease, and now, of course, endovascular um, uh, intervention and structural heart disease as well. Our intent was to serve a very specific purpose. The field was evolving into new devices. There was a gap with respect to live case demonstration courses. We wanted to fill that need. But we then realized that we could fill a larger need. We could become the default interventional meeting for this space of lesser invasive catheter-based therapies. Um, and as we began to grow that, we had the sense that the, that the meeting could become much more. The um, uh, vast group of physicians who are interested in the cutting edge, newer, um, emerging investigational technologies or approaches, um, which was very much became involved in bringing the rest of the world to America through the live case venues, which spread to up to 30 live case sites, um, 100 uh, you know, plus live cases. Uh, you know, being done uh, in over 40 hours of transmission. There was a time when we only transmitted live cases to a single theater. Well, now we're transmitting live cases to three or four theaters. If you can imagine the level of complexity involved in having a central control room that is able to juggle the various transmissions from all o over the world simultaneously, that's not something that I ever uh, could have imagined back in, uh, in 1991 when I first joined CRF. TCT has taken many chances in presenting information um, and um, the live case format we have really tried to evolve and every year we do things differently um, uh, and we have a large group of outside the U.S. and inside the U.S. operators and transmission sites. I think we've succeeded in, in really taking that format to a much, much higher level. TCT has always showcased new technology, particularly new technology in its infancy. But I think the one time where TCT had the greatest impact on interventional cardiology in the U.S. was prior to the approval of intracoronary stents. There was one TCT when all live demonstration cases from the rest of the world involved stent implantation, but none of the live demonstration cases from the U.S. involved stent implantation because we did not have stents approved. Uh, this is an indication that in the United States, of course, we could not stent. We don't have the short stent to use. Okay, and of those who didn't raise their hand for stenting, how many of those can't do stent? You know, don't have, haven't 
caught in the thing. <laughs> And there was, it was so obvious that the U.S. was behind the rest of the world that, in my mind, this led to the um, approval of stents um, shortly thereafter. And in the main arena, we're going to go to Jerusalem, Israel. And we're going to go straight to Italy with Antonio Colombo and his team. So we're going to immediately um, uh, go live to the um, Skirbel Center for Cardiovascular Research. And we'll go uh, immediately to Japan. So we have built upon the success of an international, global, um, live case transmission educational format, which is really an extension of our lineage of the earliest days of Grunzik and Hartzler with live cases, but taken to the extreme. This year, for instance, everything is going to be in high definition because we think the clarity of the images does make a difference in terms of how you present the educational material. And there are many other changes that will in involve this year that I think will further improve the educational content of that format. I'm very proud of the way the live cases are now done at TCT. I think early on the live cases um, received some criticism by some people as perhaps being too commercial. They were really centered around the devices more than they were around the patients. This is a new balloon from Mansfield. What's it called? Ally. No, I mean if a stent comes on a balloon, it's, you know, it's got, it's got to cost more than a balloon, and uh, less than a Mercedes, so. <laughs> and we recognized that 10 years ago as being a potential limitation, and it wasn't going in the direction we wanted, and we put a lot of extra rigor in that, and we removed any reference to the devices unless they were absolutely critical to the case. A wire, for the most part, is a guide wire. You don't have to say who made it, it's just a wire. But, uh, of course, if one talks about a, a new critical interventional um, aortic valve for transcatheter valve therapy, that's very important to talk about the pros and cons, the limitations and strengths of that device. This is a bovine pericardial valve. It really is you know, the same kind of valve material that is used in all the Edwards surgical valves. We take the live cases extraordinarily serious and have an excellent track record of the outcomes of the patients who are undergoing live case interventions at TCT. We feel that uh, the success of TCT in the future will depend upon uh, its constant focus on innovation, the uniqueness of having a live case venue and a live course where people can face-to-face um, -to -face connect and network because that helps to drive some of the process of innovation and growth. I didn't see any thrombus in there. I don't see any thrombus well, No thrombus, that's, that's important. Good point, Paul. I think I could see it better than you can. I believe we were the first to globalize interventional cardiology education, um, leveling the playing field amongst various um, countries. But all countries now have their live demonstration courses, and I believe that by leading the field of interventional vascular medicine, and by being on the cutting edge of education in this field, we have caused other meetings to become better. Pe colleagues from other countries who put on their own live demonstration courses come to TCT to see what's hot, what is innovative, and what ideas they can take back home uh, to their own audience. We're going to move right ahead with this case, if that's okay. I believe that TCT has had this global impact by um, causing interventional vascular medicine to become more and more of a global specialty by bringing together individuals from all over the world at one point in time, by showcasing cases from so many different countries, including emerging countries, by highlighting new technology, technology that is just being developed or just being used in first man experiences, um, by having a, an intense saturation experience. I believe all of that uh, has pushes the field of international vascular medicine forward one giant step once a year when people come to TCT.